Sometime in ER, emergency uh, room, you may come across a CICO situation. That is, cannot intubate, cannot oxygenate situation. So, in that case, what is the rescue technique of choice in an adult? Definitely, the rescue technique of choice in an adult in failed intubation is uh, cricothyroidotomy. Cricothyroidotomy or cricothyroidotomy. Okay, so today we will uh, discuss on cricothyroidotomy, its indications and technique and complications. So, what is a cricothyroidotomy? That is uh, rapid entry into the airway. Uh, in this, here, uh, hyoid bone. This is thyroid cartilage thyroid gland this is cricoid cartilage and tracheal rings so this membrane is crico uh, thyrohyoid membrane thyroid hyoid thyrohyoid membrane and this membrane is uh, cricothyroid membrane and this one is cricotracheal membrane membranes will be there between the uh, cricoid and trachea you have the cricotracheal membrane also so our uh, Discussion is on this, that is the cricothyroid membrane. Uh, opening this cricothyroid membrane is called cricothyroidotomy or cricothyroidotomy. And once we have reached the, breach the cricothyroid membrane or once we have opened the cricothyroid membrane, we can keep the airway either by putting a uh, mini tracheostomy tube or by putting a large bore or wide bore needle through this. Okay. So, what are the indications of doing a cricothyroidotomy? Indications. All these situations, we can you can go for a cricothyroidotomy. In which cases, in, uh, in these cases, the conventional uh, airway technique should fail also. Okay. You cannot intubate the patient or otherwise you cannot establish an airway and if it is in a uh, CACA situation, cannot intubate and cannot oxygenate situation, arises. One is in trauma, that is the most common thing. Uh, along with trauma, there will be a bleeding from uh, nose, oral cavity and from the uh, pharynx also. So, hemorrhage, trauma leading to hemorrhage from nose and uh, pharynx or in cases of uh, uh, facial muscle spasm or laryngeal spasm or uncontrollable emesis in which uh, as, uh, chance of, uh, high chance of aspiration and airway cannot be maintained. And upper airway obstruction may be due to foreign body uh, causing the obstruction or due to any other reason. So these are the absolute uh, indications. And one relative indication is to cervical spine uh, stabilization secondary to trauma to maxillofacial injuries. Okay, so cervical spine immobilization. In that case, we can go for a cricothyroidotomy uh, before that. Secondary to uh, maxillofacial injuries. Okay, so these are the indications of doing a cricothyroidotomy. And what are the contraindication? Actually, there is no contraindication for this uh, emergency situation. But uh, some uh, relative contraindications like age of the patient is a relative contraindication. We usually will not do a cricothyroidotomy if the child is aged between 5 to 12, less than 5 to 12 years of age. Because there is high, on, one thing is in infants and children, this larynx is at a higher level. So there is high chance of a glottisinosis or subglottisinosis. And also this should be done with a high level of caution in case of uh, uh, fractured larynx or fractured laryngeal cartilages or in a uh, known case of uh, tracheal surgeries. Uh, instruments or 
things needed uh, before doing a cryotherotomy preparation instruments or things needed uh, antiseptic uh, solution should be there to clean the area and you have to infiltrate with a uh, one or two percent lidocaine with adrenaline you need sterile drapes and gloves ideally number 11 or number 20 scalpel blade is the 11 is the ideal one bag valve mask should be ready tracheal dilator if available is a luxury and uh, regarding tubes if you are using uh, endotracheal tube you can use uh, number 6 or 8 uh, endotracheal tube or tracheostomy tube the shiny tube is preferred if available and uh, number 4 is the preferred one for doing a cryotherotomy ok so all this should be uh, arranged and you need an assistant and if a uh, staff nurse is again a luxury position of patient is similar to that of tracheostomy that is supine with the neck extended by keeping a sandbag or a pillow under the shoulders and using a head ring you can extend the neck of the patient and use the uh, antiseptic solution make the area sterile uh, apply uh, drapes etc and then you can you have to identify the thyroid and also the cricoid that is the most important thing on this identification of the structures in obese patients sometimes identification by palpatory method will be very difficult in that case you can use an ultrasound guidance to identify the cricothyroid membrane so otherwise you can start from above downwards from the thyroid notch identify the thyroid area then go downwards and there will be a change in consistency once you reach the cricoid, mem uh, cricoid cartilage so keep the non-dominant hand use the non-dominant hand thumb and the middle finger and keep it on the thyroid area and with the index finger First palpate the cricoid cartilage and go upward and below between this thyroid and cricoid you will reach the cricothyroid membrane. So keep your fingers there and then infiltrate. 1% uh, or 2% cyclocaine with adrenaline infiltrated and after that put up. Ideally this cricothyroid membrane is 9 mm vertically and 30 mm. 9 into 30. 9 mm into 30 mm. So 9 vertically and 30 millimeters horizontally you will get it that much of space. So put a uh, vertical incision over this. If you have instrument then you can dissect. If you have no instrument then um, dissect the go through the subcutaneous tissue with your fingers. Ignore the bleeding. There will be heavy bleeding may occur. So just ignore that. And once you reach the cricothyroid membrane. On reaching the cricothyroid membrane you have to put the uh, horizontal incision ok superficial incision should be vertical and the uh, incision over the cryotherapy membrane should be horizontal again you have the tracheal dilated dilated if not use your uh, index finger of your uh, dominant hand to dissect through that and after that you can put up uh, and if you have an endotracheal tube of no number 6 or 8 you can use that uh, before that you have to use a uh, boogie and uh, to pass through the cricothyroid membrane and always the direction should be downwards. If you are going upward you have the uh, vocal cords here there is chance of injury to the vocal cord. So always go downwards and uh, first apply a boogie and over the boogie you can insert the uh, endotracheal tube number 6 or 8 or if you have a tracheostomy tube shiny tube is there you can directly insert the shyly tracheostomy tube then keep it in place and you have done with your cricothyroidotomy and if you have no instrument you, you have no scalpel blade or you have no um, tracheal dilator or you have no tracheostomy tube or anything then you can use a whiteboard needle for that okay in a syringe and needle with you you can use a 10 cc syringe 10 ml syringe with a needle and a cannula so directly uh, puncture the cricothyroid membrane with your uh, needle and uh, advance the cannula in a downward or a caudal direction and withdraw and the syringe should contain half of half full of saline 50 percentage of saline should be there so that you can withdraw and confirm by entry of air into the syringe so uh, then after that you withdraw the needle and then advance the 
cannula. So if it is, this is your cannula. Connect it with the syringe. And this can be uh, connected to an ambu bag. Using a endotracheal tube adapter. Okay. So, uh, cannula, syringe, endotracheal tube adapter and uh, ambu. Okay. Uh, this can be placed and directly, in that case, you have to directly ship the patient to an OT, OT setup and you have to do a formal tracheostomy. And because in, in this case, there is, we can give only oxygen. So, we can give oxygen to replenish the tissue, but carbon dioxide washout will not happen. So, in the long run, it will be injurious to the patient and also chance of injury to the glottis structures and subglottis stenosis is very high. So, at a stretch, you should not, this cricothyroidomy at a maximum should be for 40 to 60 minutes, that is up to 1 hour and ideally within that, that time you have to convert this to a uh, conventional uh, uh, tracheostomy, either a mini tracheostomy or percutaneous tracheostomy or our classical tracheostomy. Okay, so this is only for a short period, it should not be maintained for more than, ideally for more than 40 to 60 minutes and uh, so that is the procedure of a cricothyroidomy. So we discussed about the indication and the procedure. So what are the complications of uh, cricothyroidomy? We can divide into early complications and late complications. Okay, so in the early complication, while doing the surgery, there is chance of bleeding. Then there can be injury to the thyroid cartilage, cricoid cartilage, or to the tracheal rings. Then sometimes, if you are not careful, we can go by putting the needle. Uh, it can go and stuck on the or it can go and injure the posterior tracheal wall if it going posteriorly so that is why i told you that the direction should be in a caudal direction at a 45 degree if this a patient patient with a head and a limb so this should be in a downward direction and it should go at 45 degrees angle to the skin should be 45 degree direction so that it will, if you are going directly downward 90 degree there is chance of you going and pricking the posterior tracheal wall and perforation then false tract formation by putting there is chance of formation subcutaneously and forming a false tract and there is chance of infection and what are the late complications obviously it is a subglottic stenosis uh, then again infection then because of injury to the vocal cords there is chance of this, uh, change in voice or uh, dysphagia can occur or sometimes the way persistent tract formation can happen so these are the complications even then even with all these complications if, if it is a, such an emergency situation in a CACO situation you have to go for a um, uh, cricothyrotomy. So this is all regarding cricothyrotomy. Thank you.